about to leave already packing come with me i'm not hello friends and enemies welcome back to happy for now it's me isabel here with your romance landy update for august y'all y'all this month you know we were doing pretty good i felt like things were pretty chill for a while and this like last chunk of august was a freaking it was a dumpster fire it was this dude i'm looking in the viewfinder not at my fingers so it was this guy right here dumpster fire complete and total dumpster fire what the fuck so i'm just gonna warn you now this is a pretty rancy update probably <clears throat> but i am gonna go into a lot of things i think we need to talk about as community um and things that have had really good conversations happening all right first things first Let's do our usual RWA update. So the RWA this month released the rules for the Vivian Steven Award awards, the rubrics for them, and had their conference. So um, just to quickly go through it, there were a couple issues with some of the panels on the conference being like questionable, but otherwise it sounds like it was a really good presentation overall. Um, you can go scroll the hashtag to go check it out if you're curious. I'm not going to go into too many details because I personally don't have access to the conference, so I wasn't able to go view the things that were questionable, just kind of able to see some side conversations around it. And then also <clears throat> on the awards. So they announced, they released the rubrics, and it has a very similar, to my understanding, rating system as the Rita's. I didn't see anything laid in there specifically around anti-racism, which was the problem with the Rita's is that people would deem a story not an HEA because it had black characters falling in love or it had Asian characters falling in love. Basically, if it wasn't white centric, there are people who th think that that means it's not an HEA. And the problem obviously there is who your membership is and their viewpoints. Still hopeful. I really don't want them to do Vivian Stevens' name dirty. Um, which, by the way, she's still alive, if you didn't know that, because I realized that some people thought she was dead, and, like, she's not. She's alive. She's already been erased from the RWA history systematically by people because they didn't want to acknowledge the fact that a black woman founded this organization and did a lot of the legwork early on. And that alone is a problem, so I am very stressed out currently about this in the Vivians. <laughs> Um, and on that note, I want to mention that the Texas Monthly did a great interview with Vivian Stevens. There's a great picture of her in that where she's like holding one of her books and it just, it warmed my heart, y'all. I want that woman to have a great later life and enjoy things. Talked about her getting the email about the Vivians and being surprised because again, she has systematically been erased from this history and that's a, like super not okay. And yeah, I just... Fingers crossed, y'all. Um, all right, we're gonna dive in now to all of the heavy shit. Um, so just warning. First up, we're gonna talk about death um, because I can't not do this update and not acknowledge this. We lost um, Corey Alexander or Zan West last month to an illness. It was not anything else. It was something related to their disability. Um, they are a pivotal member of the queer community for Romance Landia. Constantly, I mean, I would link them all the time in these updates, constantly providing resources and lists and endless love and support to a lot of the queer members of Romance Landia. And I just, I cried a lot <laughs> when it was announced. We actually, um, at Romance Sparks Joy, plug for my like side thing that I do with a bunch of other amazing people. We had an in the love seat ready to go with them and um, basically released it right after that was announced because we literally were like had just sent them like the final version. But yeah if you want to read about Corey's impact on the community I can't recommend it enough please go read those lists um, and just you know we lost someone extremely impactful and thoughtful in the community. I continue to seek out their threads on things and forget that they're not there anymore. Um, they also wrecked me two of the books that I really loved in my reading the tropes, beating the beast thing. And I was so excited to go back and be like, thank you so much. And I never got that chance. So yeah, it's just, it's a lot. 
All right, let's go to something fun. Miss Bev is on the cover of the Writer's Digest this month for September, October. It's such a great cover. I love it. I'm so happy for her. I will always spotlight Miss Bev here. Also, Miss Bev's Southern Blessings series got picked up by Al Roker Entertainment or something to become a TV show. So that's also super exciting, y'all. Um, I can't wait to see what comes of this. Hopefully it's good. Um, I think it will be. All right. This section, <clears throat> oh God, y'all, y'all are not ready for this. I'm calling this ass addery. This is gonna get bucketed into our bookish stuff section already. But this is just what has happened in the last two weeks. First up, Adriana Herrera announced her historical romance. And this jackass, whose comment I'm putting here, is critiquing the fact that there are people of color in this book because apparently, apparently, they want to claim that only white people existed in these locations and that other people of color were not traveling or perhaps, perhaps passing themselves off as white people because that's what you would freaking do then. Hello. So just in general, can we, can I have a conversation with y'all? Like, let's not, let's not, don't, don't do that. Don't, don't be that asshole. Don't run into historical fiction mentions to say, this isn't historically accurate. Your Duke with six pack abs is not historically accurate. That man reeks to high heaven, hasn't taken a bath or a shower in weeks probably, also doesn't have teeth most likely, and, and there were not 85 bajillion dukes, marquesses, any of that either. So your 10 year period Regency books that you won't step outside of, guess what? That's just not real. That was not the case. Do, do you want to read those? Do you want to read those with like stinky boys in it? Cause I don't. Um, it's historical romance. Historicals are fantasy at the end of the day, really, okay? Like, this is not a history book. We don't have to be historically accurate. All historicals have an element of fan fantasy in them because if you're gonna have a Duke, you're gonna have your Marquess, whoever the hell else you're gonna have, guess what? You're not addressing colonialism. You're not addressing how they got their wealth, which is most likely from slave trading or the East India Trade Company and all sorts of other awful things like owning plantations. And guess what? We don't want that. And if that is what you want, go have at it because honestly, that's not a redeemable hero for me at the end of the day. And if that's what your like thing is, is to go like roll up in people's mentions and be like this lady, but bye please and thank you. Get the F out of my uh, subscription box. I don't want you here. And I don't know if you would have, uh, ever found me otherwise, because that is definitely not my thing. I am always on the hunt for historical romances by authors of color, because I want to read those stories, and I don't want to have to deal with this historical accuracy thing you're spewing. I'm stealing the words from my friend E in the Romance, uh, in Romance Sparks Joys weekly update. Um, here is some general facts. One, Plantation owners, like Nazis, are a hard no. Two, reviews are for readers. Three, own voices can still be problematic rep. So here's what happened that caused this. There was this great review that was posted on Medium by a white reviewer calling out issues with Amelie's Howard, the Duke's Princess Bride. This book follows a plantation owner in the West Indies who falls in love with an Indian princess. Y'all, that's not cool. Like there are problems in this. It could be good, but things need to be removed or changed. You can't. <laughs> okay. So let's continue my rantiness. I told you all this is going to be a fun one. Um, so this review spun out of control on Twitter for a whole weekend. People were showing their asses so hard. Reviewers that I adore have locked their Twitters. They're talking about leaving reviewing. 
Um, they're talking about why they don't review books or talk about them on Twitter when they're problematic because this is what happens. So first things first, one of the big critiques that came out of this was the fact that a white person called this out. But all of the Southeast Asian reviewers I followed were thankful that a white person called this out so that they didn't have to read the book. And there are things that I think you can make the judge yourself of what you can and can't call out. I, I could, if I read this book, I think these are things I could have called out. Like, this is not okay. I think if I read a book by any author of color and I noticed things like that that aren't okay, like the, the setup, the premise, plantation ownership, all those things, I can call that out. I, I really can't call out representation in that own voice's book or thing because I'm not that identity. But you can call out things that are problematic and harmful, y'all, no matter what your race is. You can't call out cultural keystones of a culture or say this this doesn't feel accurate to the culture that I'm aware of because you're not that culture. But, but here's the deal. I can look at reviews for not a romance I read like Mexican Gothic in which people said it wasn't Mexican enough and I go, how do you know because you're white or not Mexican? Like, you don't know. So that's the thing, right? We can call out the things that are blatantly problematic or bring attention to them and maybe go find own voices reviews to support what we're saying but we cannot also sit here and discredit a white reviewer for trying to call these things out when they did so appropriately and southeast reviewers southeast asian reviewers said thank you and this is what we wanted this then turned into an egocentric conversation where a lot of authors were saying like, well, I'm allowed to write what I want to write if it's uh, because I'm an author of color and, you know, I shouldn't be limited, blah, blah, blah. Sure, go for it. But a reviewer is also allowed to call out harm in a book, no matter what you write. And a reviewer is allowed to not like your book. Again, reviews are for reviewers and a conversation around a review should not turn into an egocentric conversation around you as an author and what you want to write historically. It was literally a freaking mess until Courtney Milan rolled in and was like, y'all, get your shit together. Like, I'm not even going to link you all the threads because it's that bad. But I do want to talk about a couple of Southeast Asian reviewers because y'all, like, go show them some love because right now they have spent the whole weekend being silenced, attacked, and then apologies were issued but no one ever directly contacted any of them who they were attacking. So first up I would like you all to go check out Nick of Nick of the Books. I will link to her Twitter in the comments down below. I really enjoy their Twitter feed and I think they do great reviews. Also there's Aria of Ardently Aria. She is a reviewer at Smart Bitches and she posts on Goodreads a lot too. Definitely recommend checking her out. And then last but not least is Ari, who reviewed The Duke's Princess Bride on Goodreads as an own voices reviewer because people were asking for it and pushed herself through a book that honestly caused her harm. So go check that out. Leave her a nice comment. Do not be an asshole. Um, so yeah, I just, again, stop policing reviewers. Stop policing historical accuracy. Get your shit together. Just, just go to your friendship group chat, okay? Go to your group chat, y'all. Like, I don't know how many times I have to tell you this. Go to your group chat and vent about something that bugs you. You don't have to put it on Twitter. You don't have to blast it into the world. We don't need, we don't need it. Don't show your ass. Please stop showing your all's asses. All right. Uh, and then in just other, in case you didn't know, news, Jamie McGuire's awful. Okay, y'all, she just got dropped by her literary agency for defending that dude from Kenosha who murdered two people who was like 17. Freaking terrifying. And it's awful. So I just want you to know she's awful. Here's links to tweets. Go unfollow her and block her, please, for the love of God. Also, like, if you didn't know, in like 2012, she was harassing reviewers on Goodreads for not liking her book. Bye. Just bye. She's gone. She's out of my life. <clears throat> I actually haven't read her beyond that one book in ages. All right, now some fun stuff to close this out because I'm warm from ranting. <laughs> uh, first up, something really fun. Jessica Pride has a rom or 
a romance. It has an essay collection coming out about black romance. And I'm so excited for this. I'm so excited for Jessica. She does a great job putting together that Kissing Books newsletter and they have their podcast on Book Riot as well. She does other, like that's not her full-time job, but like she's delightful. I adore her on Twitter. Um, and then I also wanted to share that Talia Hibbert's Eve Brown got a cover in case you missed it. Uh, it's pretty cute. I like it. I wonder if like blues the cover of 2021. We'll see. And yeah, that is it for our Romance Landia monthly update. Let me know how your August was in the comments. Let's chat about it. Hopefully you had a good month. Hopefully this got you up to speed on some bullshit drama. And yeah, if you enjoyed this, be sure to subscribe. I will be back with more romance content in just a few days and give this one a thumbs up. Everything is linked in the description box, including links to my social media, my Ko-fi page, um, pretty much anything and everything possible is down there in that box. So check it out, do your reading. Let's go have a much, much better month in September, y'all. Please, like I can't, I cannot deal with any more loss of people I adore. August was rough. All right, I'll see you soon, bye. Really asking, we'll get away to a place where we don't know